Okay, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, hopping in and to uh, listen to a couple of us talking. So um, I've seen uh, the audience are from really everywhere, North America to Europe, and a lot of the, a lot of you are in Asia. So um, I'm Yanto uh, from uh, Hong Kong Polytechnic University. Uh, the, the, the topic of the session is about social innovation, but the, the broader theme of this conference is about um, carbon neutral, uh, environmental sort of uh, thinking and solution to our world's problems. Uh, early on, uh, the first speaker have talked about what is a social innovation. So basically is uh, a new form of innovation in which uh, people are trying to benefit a lot of people instead of this innovation being accrued uh, in the hands of a small number of people or, or a small number of companies. So in social innovation, you want to come up with something that can benefit a lot of people. And social innovation has been uh, studied in many disciplines and areas. If you are in design, in engineering, um, of course, also in various parts of social sciences, including organization and management, which I'm a part of, you'll see that uh, the social innovation has been interpreted very differently across different fields. So here I'm taking more from an organization and management perspective to social innovation. Uh, having done uh, research on social innovation and entrepreneurship for quite some years, I've also built a lot of interest on new technology, uh, one of which is Web 3.0, and in particular blockchain, with its potential to decentralize ownership and decentralize opportunities to a lot of people. And this sort of notion of decentralization is really important because it can deal with a lot of these issues that we are uh, we are dealing with, in, in particular with the context of uh, environmental issues. Some of the challenges uh, that we are facing at the moment could perhaps be addressed using uh, smart contracts that are embedded in the blockchain. Because um, the, the whole idea behind this is that if you want to help solve the environmental problems, a top-down solution to start with the policy may or may not work uh, because it sort of like enforces people or kind of like forces people to behave in a certain way. But the decentralized approach is a very bottom-up approach in which you give people the real incentives, a real monetary incentives, economic incentives, but also environmental incentive to take part, to take part and by having this thought as a, a, a grounded, a ground up approach, it will definitely attract the policy makers to join in and help make this um, in a larger scale. So later I'll, I'll show you uh, one small case study on that um, in, in the Switzerland. Let's see if I can go to the next stage. So what we're seeing here is how we structure our energy has been the one on the most left, right? So there is somebody producing the energy and that energy is distributed to each of our individual homes, right? And then in today's situation, you see um, there are different ways uh, of, of course, different types of sources of energy that have been used. Um, but what we are interested mostly is the tomorrow's part, right? So in which each one of us who live in our own homes, we can create our energy and we can share our energy to our neighbors, to the people who are connected in the grid. So this grid is uh, what we call a uh, smart electricity grid that is connected to the blockchain and enabled by smart contract. So if you just look at how, um, what we do really um, in terms of you know, our energy consumption, typically um, if you install a solar panel, right? Solar panel, that's the green line, right? So during the hottest of the day, it will pick up the most electricity from the sun, right? And how do we consume electricity in our home? That is the blue line there. So early in the morning, just before we go to office, we are we have having a lot of activity, right? At home, right? And then when we are in the office or the kids are not at home, electricity is not so much used. And then when we are home, you know, after 6, 7 p.m., it goes up. So uh, there's differences between people's way of consuming electricity, and there are different times that we uh, uh, use electricity. So, so these differences actually create a lot of opportunities. 
And with a blockchain, with a, with a smart energy trading using solar panel, we could address some of the issues. So what is actually happening with uh, this, what I call smart energy trading? On the one hand, we have computers in our home that is connected to other people's computer through the internet, right? So these are computers and computers connection. But also there's a physical connection, the cables that run through my homes with my neighbor's home, with maybe another neighbors down the block. And these are the physical layer. So there's this, you know, the, the, the web connection and the physical electricity connection among homes and among users. And you can also see that as you are, as we are as um, a user of energy, by installing the solar panel, we can also become the producer of energy. That's what we, we call prosumer, producer and consumer together. So we can use the energy from our own solar panel, while we can also sell the energy that we produce in our solar panel to our neighbors or to someone else in the grid, right? So among prosumers and consumers, consumers are people who purely consume. They don't put or they don't install any solar panel. So among consumers and prosumers, uh, there will be a connection at the physical and cyber layer. And also you may have, uh, let's say government owned or uh, society, community owned electricity power uh, in different forms. And these are all of them can be connected. So this is the kind of connections that will enable uh, the smart energy trading. Now, what enables the smart energy trading is actually the smart contract. The smart contract is just a bunch of computer codes, if and then. So if something happens, then something else will happen. For example, if I want uh, to sell electricity, I will sell it at this price, at this amount. If I want to buy electricity from someone else, this is the price that I'm willing to accept and this is the amount of that I'm willing to accept. So the smart contract will execute everything automatically without having a person to click the buttons in, in between, because this will be a very difficult task to do for anyone to control. In between. That's why it's got decentralized. So think of, of that in terms of, you have um, so many transactions that could happen every day, every week, every month across people who produce and use uh, solar panel energy with their networks in the grid. Um, so, so that's that's basically what's uh, uh, sort of happening in the in the uh, blockchain enabled smart energy trading. So, this is one small case. This is actually my last slide. Uh, this is uh, a small village in Switzerland that have piloted the use of blockchain. The uh, they, this organization is called Quartier Strong. Quartier Strong. Uh, actually, their model is that they they're using Ethereum. This is one of the cryptocurrency. So Ethereum is a general purpose blockchain that allows people to build any kind of applications, right? Uh, not just a cryptocurrency like Ether, but it can be used to build uh, apps, to build uh, decentralized finance, to develop decentralized autonomous organizations. It can be used to develop um, uh, all kinds of things, including for smart energy trading. So what we have here in the quarter, quarter strong is a village in, um, Switzerland, uh, I forgot the real name of this uh, uh, town. So they have this building that you see in the, in the picture. So one, two, three, four, around four or five buildings. And at the top of these buildings, you have the uh, solar panels. And these solar panels are the physical layer that are connected to one another and they are owned by certain individuals who live uh, inside that uh, building, right? And their computers are connected with one another in this blockchain system and they will be able to trade energy with one another. So in essence, what is the benefit to this, to the, to the, to the, to the residents who, who, who are participating in this program? So there are only 30 something uh, residents, uh, households, 30 something households that are participating here. So what happens is you could produce your own electricity at a much cheaper price, and you can also become an entrepreneur. You can gain some profit by selling your excess energy supply. This is very important, the excess energy supply, this, the energy that you don't use during the daytime, maybe you're in the office or you're in school, you can sell it to someone else who needs them. Maybe someone needs to work from home. 
or they need to use a lot of energy at home while you are not there. So everyone can sell to one another at a particular price. And, and um, yeah, so at, at you, as, as, a, as a producer, as well as, as a consumer of electricity, you have the freedom to choose at what amount and at what price you want to buy and sell this electricity. And, and, and this is actually one of the world's first uh, projects that try to pilot uh, the use of uh, blockchain-enabled smart energy trading. So I uh, hope that raises uh, some interest from you about the potential of uh, blockchain and smart contract to develop a more sustainable uh, world in which the thesis of this idea is that let's use incentives because people are driven by incentives. If you give them all the reasons that by participating in environmentally uh, sustainable projects will help uh, the environment, but also help yourself financially and non-financially, that is a very strong incentives. And with this incentive, you can get more people to participate. When you have a lot of people participating, you can actually tackle a lot of these you know, carbon, carbon and climate change uh, problems in a more um, a workable manner instead of um, you know, telling people, uh, you know, not to use a certain type of energy, but you just incentivize with people and people will naturally take this up, adopt this as a form of innovation, just like we adopt iPhone, just like when we adopt um, a particular software and we adopt the first uh, computer in our lives uh, or adopting the first internet in our own, in our lives. And that is the kind of incentive that perhaps this technology could bring to the world. I'll stop it there and I'll welcome any uh, Q&A later uh, at the end. Thank you.